Hello YouTube, XCT here. In this video we are solving Intelligence, a really nice Windows machine on Hack2Box created by Mika. For user we will enumerate PDFs on a web server and will use both the content and metadata to find valid credentials of a domain user. For root we update the DNS entry, steal a hash and dump a GMSA password. Finally we will exploit constraint delegation with Impacket to get an administrator ticket. The initial port scan shows that we are likely dealing with a domain controller as we have Kerberos here, we have DNS and we have LDAP. And also we can see um, in the common name here that we have um, dc.intelligence.htb. So we get the domain and the host name. Um, and in addition to that, we also have a web server here on port 80. So let's have a look at that one first. And this is a fairly default page here. We have a lot of um, default text like lorem ipsum and so on. Um, we can subscribe to newsletters. We have some downloads and at the bottom there's a contact email. But since we can't really send one, um, it won't help us, right? So let's have a look at one of these download documents here. Even though it just contains some default text, the URL structure here is fairly interesting. There's the year, the month and the day. So these are kind of predictable. So if there would be some documents that are not linked on the main page, we would likely be able to find them um, with fuzzing. So now we want to fuzz this. So let's send one request to the intruder. And we got to replace the path with what we have here for our file. And the points we want to try different payloads is the month and the day field here. And we're going to use cluster bomb here because we want to use different lists for the day and the month. So now we can load a list here. But if you look at the default ones, there aren't two um, digit numbers here. So we have to make our own lists. Just going to use a simple bash loop here. So we iterate from 1 to 31 and print it with leading zeros. So it looks like that now. And we do the exact same thing again, just for the months. This should be good. Now let's load them. Start the whole thing. And we can see that there's a lot of four fours, but there's also some 200 status codes here. So there are a lot of PDFs here that are not linked on the main page, but these are um, essentially too many to download them by hand. So we have to do some scripting uh, yet again to download them. And I'm going to change to a files folder here so we don't mess up the main folder. And now we're just going to download all of them. Um, just like we did with Intruder just now. Um, and I'm using the same thing I used to generate the lists now to just have two nested for loops um, and do exactly the same thing. Uh, we had an Intruder, right? And this time just a W get. So we get all the files in the folder here. So let's see, this looks good. We've got a lot of files here. And we gotta do some kind of processing here because I don't wanna open them um, all one by one. So I'm just going to loop over all PDF files and do PDF to text on the file name. And um, this will print it to standard out here, which I'm going to save in an output.txt file. The advantage is that it's a bit easier to scroll through that and see the text of the PDF. Of course, if there were a, like a picture with a password, we couldn't really do much. But in this case, it's an easy win. So let's do that. Let's scroll for the output. A lot of text here is lorem ipsum again. Um, here's something interesting. Um, it tells us that new users get a default password and it's listed here. So that's uh, useful for us. I'm going to copy that. And also at the very bottom, there's something here. Um, it's mentioning a user called Ted that's monitoring something about web server outages. Um, for now, it isn't really helping for us, so we can ignore it. Uh, but I'm still going to copy it over here. So that's one thing we can do here. Um, if we use exif tool on one of the PDFs, just uh, use the last one here we can actually see um, the creator of the PDF here. And this is pretty interesting because um, if these are valid domain users, we have a nice list of users um, in the domain. So let's actually get all these creators. Um, I'm going to use a bash loop here yet again. 
uh, we're going over all PDFs and do EXIF tool on all of the files. And so we get this output um, like above, and then we grab for creator and use AWK to um, essentially cut it at this position. So we just get the outer. And I'm going to save all of that in users.txt here. So let's open that. And as you can see, we got a nice list of users here. But since one user can create more than one PDF, we have a few duplicates here. And to get rid of them, just going to do a sort dash u here. Save it like that. And now we got a nice list that's a lot shorter and only has unique entries. So the last thing really we got to do here is we got to spray the password we got, which is um, this one, against all of these users. So let's do that. Just going to use crack map exec here, like that. Crack map exec SMB. Then we get to give it the IP of the target, um, our users list, and then the password. So let's do that. And there's a lot of failures, and for one user it actually worked, which is Tiffany Molina um, with this password here. So let's copy that. So now we can use SMB client, hopefully, and list the chairs. Maybe that's an interesting one. Copy the password. And here we go. We can really list the shares. And IT and users are certainly shares that are not always there. So let's check these out. Maybe users first, because there could be a flag. Here we go. We are allowed to connect. Um, let's go to our own users folder. Go to the desktop. And here we go. We get user.txt, which we can now read. So remember, there was one more share here. So. Let's go to this IT share now. And here we find a new file called downdetector.ps1, which kind of fits the hint we got earlier about this web server monitoring. So let's have a look at that one. And this looks fairly interesting. Um, it's importing the Active Directory module, and then it's looking for DNS entries, um, all entries starting with web. And it's trying to send a web request to all of these entries. What's especially interesting here is that the flag use default credentials is used, so it will try to authenticate to these endpoints. Um, this is basically a fairly big hint at, um, that we have to create our own DNS entry pointing to our box, and then we can listen with something like responder and capture the hash. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So one tool you can use for that um, for updating the DNS entry is KRB Relay X. So let's clone that. And then there should be this DNS tool.py. And this is essentially allowing us to modify records. So let's do that. So let's go through all these parameters. Um, we give it our user, uh, we give it the password. Uh, we tell it to add an entry, and I'm going to call it entry web xct because we saw it can be anything that starts with web. Um, then we give it our IP and the IP of the target. So let's run that. And we can see that this has indeed worked. The new DNS entry is now set. So the only thing left to do is to make an endpoint which the server can authenticate against, and we're going to use responder here. So I'm just going to start it like that. Nothing special, and if we scroll up here, we can see that HTTP is actually listening, so this looks good. And now we just gotta wait um, until the server tries to execute that script. And I think the timer is fairly, fairly large, it's like five minutes or something like that. And here we go, we got the hit, and we get a hash. So let's copy this hash here. Then we can just crack it with rocku.txt and John. This J is just an alias for that. And here we go. We get the password for the user ted.graves. So now we kind of want to know what this user um, has permission to do. So let's run Bloodhound. And um, since we do not have a shed on the target and we won't get one until the very end, so 
One way to run Bloodhound uh, without having a shell is to use Bloodhound-Python. Uh, and you can basically run it like that. Collection methods like on the Sharphound as well, username, password, domain, domain controller. It's important you have the name here and not just an IP. And other than that, um, it's just the default options more or less. So let's run that. Actually, let's go back one directory and run it here. And this is working just like the normal um, Sharphound would. So here we go, it finished. Let's switch to Bloodhound and actually import these files. And now let's see what our user can do, which is Ted Graves. Let's see. And it's already telling us here that we have one reachable high value target. So this is pretty interesting. Let's just click that. And it already found a way for us to escalate our privileges. So Ted Graves is a member of the IT support group. And everyone in this group has the privilege to read GMSA passwords, which are group managed service accounts. And this essentially allows us to get the, the hash of this user svc underscore int. So let's look at the abuse info here. Um, it's telling us to use this binary here, which we can execute on the target, but obviously this wouldn't work because we don't have a shell. Um, so we have to be a bit more creative here. And one way to do that is to use the tool um, from the author of the box, which is called GMSA Dumper. So let's clone that here. And this tool essentially allows us to just run it from our attacker box. So we give it the username, um, the password, and the endpoint, and we should be able to get the password. Yeah, so here we get the NTLM hash of the user SVC int. So let's copy that. And let's see what we can do with this user. If we go back to Bloodhound, we can see that this user is allowed to delegate to the DC. Um, let's look at Bloodhound here. And let's look at the description. It allows a principal to authenticate as any user to specific services on a target computer. And in addition, um, there's also a way to swap the service. So we essentially can be any user on the target um, with any service. Let's look at the views info. Um, it's telling us to use Rubius here. And that's mostly the way I exploit it as well. But in this case, we again cannot use it because we do not have a shell. But it's also possible to do it via Impacket. So we're going to use that. And the way we can exploit it with Impacket is via Impacket get ST, which is get service ticket. We just have to give it the SPN, um, the account name, and the hash, which we just got from the line above here. And we have to tell it which user to impersonate, which in this case is just going to be the administrator. And if you're wondering where this SPN is coming from, if we go to Bloodhound here. Go on this user, it should show us the SPN. Here we see it, allow to delegate. So we can delegate to this um, specific SPN here. So let's run that. And now it's telling us that the uh, clock school is too great. And this happens all the time in Hack the Box because somehow their times on the machines are not synchronized. One way to fix that is just to run sudo NTP date um, and then the IP or the um, host entry for the target box. And this will just adjust our local time to the one of the target. We can see there was a huge adjustment here. So it was really required. Um, let's just run that again now. And this seems to have worked. We now have a CC cache file. And this is essentially um, a cached ticket, which we can use to authenticate to the target. So in order to use it, we have to export it first. The way you do that is you um, export carby 5 cc name and you give it the full name to the ticket like that. And then you can do klist and that will actually show you the ticket. Um, now the only thing really left to do is to authenticate to the target. Um, and one tool we can use here is impacket psxec. It's going to use administrator um, dash k to use the ticket don't want to enter a password. And now it's authenticating with the ticket and we indeed get a shell as system on the target. So that should be the last step. Let's go to users, administrator, desktop, and here we can read the final flag. 
That's it for this video. Um, if you liked the video, please subscribe, click the like button and see you next time.